Hey, everyone. We're back. We're here at the 6.5 Summit, day number three. We are in the ESG and DEI track for this spotlight session. We've got Todd Brady. He's the Chief Sustainability Officer and VP of Global Public Affairs at Intel. Todd, welcome to the 6.5 Summit. Hey, thanks. Great to be here. So such, a, such an important topic, uh, sustainability. Uh, every company that is talking to the public has kind of come out over the last couple of years and started to have a bit more to say about ESG climate. In fact, all the things that we're talking about here on this track. But I think it's really interesting is that the approaches are different. They're unique and different companies are sort of taking it on in a different way. You're in such an important industry. Semiconductors are at the center of the, the world right now. I say semiconductors are eating the world, Todd. But talk a little bit about what Intel's approach right now is around sustainability. Yeah, well, well it's a great, uh, great introduction because you're absolutely right. The, the world we live in is becoming more and more digital. And, and in fact, as Intel, our purpose is to build that world changing technology that improves people's lives. And so within that purpose that we have as a company is at the core of it is sustainability. And so as we approach sustainability, we really look at the broad impacts that we have and that we can have. And so it all starts with our uh, sustainable manufacturing. We're an IDM, we, we build our own products. And so it has to start there, that's our foundation. And so that's minimizing, reducing the amount of uh, carbon emissions, the amount of water we use, recycling more waste, all of those things are fundamental to building that foundation. From there, it goes to our products and, and how do we create a more sustainable product? And energy efficiency of the product is, is probably the number one thing we can do. And so we, we have very bold goals there to prove our, the energy efficiency of our products by 10X over the decade. And, and, then, and then lastly, the, what I call sustainable solutions. Um, these are what, what can we do with our products and how can we help our customers since we're building that building block? How do we help them build a green PC design a green PC, offer a product into the marketplace that makes the world more sustainable. So it's really an exciting place to be right now. Yeah, absolutely, Todd. And I'm so glad that you, you know, kind of mentioned about energy because given the boom of generative AI, all the, you know, compute horsepower that's gonna be used to build cars of the future, cities of the future, data centers that are gonna enable all of this great technology that's gonna change the world, it's all built on chips and it's all built on, you know, we, we know data centers, they are using a lot of power and it's our responsibility as an industry to figure out how to do it with less power while not sacrificing performance. That's something that Intel really has to focus on every single day. Now, one question, you know, this whole event was built around sort of, we call navigating rough waters. After a few great boom years for tech, uh, the industry has been tougher. And for Intel, it's been a pretty tough couple of years as well. Um, you know, while the company's doing great work, it's moving towards its IDM2 strategy, five and four years, things are going in the right direction, but between tech as a whole and Intel's challenges, there's a lot of people out there that might say like, well, why keep investing here? Like, you know, it's a lot of dollars. It doesn't necessarily bear fruit immediately. Um, in this current macro, why is Intel continuing to pour its energy into sustainability? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. And for us, as we've taken a step back and analyzed it, Sustainability is good business. And, and let me give you a few examples. Again, as we start in our own operations, we've invested heavily in energy efficiency. We talk about energy and, uh, and how do we use less energy? How do we uh, get more efficient in the use of energy? And what we found is that as we're investing, those uh, investments have a, have a very short payback, typically three years or less when we invest in, in new equipment, whether that's data centers, whether that's industrial chillers, whether that's you know, lighting, we can get a very quick payback on our investment. Uh, so both reducing our emissions and reducing our costs. Um, water recycling, same thing. Waste, we, we're looking at our waste differently where it, it's not something to dispose of. It's how can we reuse that and generate value out of it? Can we resell it in the market? And so taking that mindset uh, really does add to the bottom line, not take away from the bottom line. And, and then we talked about the importance of energy efficient products. That's what our customers want. And so as we develop products that are more energy efficient, there's more demand in the marketplace, that's a good thing for us. And then finally, as we create products that help our customers enable solutions for their customers, again, that drives value with our business. So we, we clearly see sustainability and business going hand in hand. 
Yeah, you make some really great points there. But I have to imagine that there's some real challenges to this, Todd, that, that you know, it's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it. <laughs> and, you know, well, like I said, there's a lot of sort of posturing. There's been a lot of positioning. The execution, I read your, you know, I read your impact report or your sustainability report, and you've been able to map out some very specific things that you're, you're doing. But I got to imagine with this being sort of your number one focus day in and day out, you're running into some challenges to get this done. Yeah, I, I call it kind of the 80-20 rule, right? So <clears throat> this is an area that, that I've spent my career uh, working on here at Intel. Um, and we made great strides. If, if we take uh, greenhouse gas emissions, for example, uh, you know, climate change is, is front and center uh, everywhere we turn these days. Um, it's something that we've been working on for a couple of decades. And as a result of that, we've been able to reduce our emissions by about 80 percent over where they would have been had we not taken those actions. Um, but now we're down to the last 20 percent. And, and now we're getting to the really challenging uh steps that we need to take in our manufacturing process, as an example. So we've reduced the use of certain, they're called F gases, without going into all the details, but they're, they're greenhouse gases. We've reduced the use of those, we abate those, but now we we've fundamentally need to look at, are there other chemistries that we use to make semiconductors so that we can ultimately drive to zero or net zero greenhouse gas emissions? Um, we have invested heavily in renewable electricity. We're over 90% renewable electricity now. Now we need to get to the, how do we get to 100%? That's our goal by 2030. And so we're getting to those countries and, and areas that are more challenging to find uh, renewable electricity. It, it, the development's not there yet. Um, natural gas is used in industrial applications. How, how can we move away from natural gas to uh, fuels that don't have the carbon emissions. So those are some of the fundamental challenges that we have ahead of us. And, and as a result, we've kicked off a number of different initiatives with uh, consortia to help work those issues because these aren't Intel only issues. These aren't even just semiconductor only issues. These are broad uh, challenges that we have as society and, and as an industrial sector that we need to work on. Yeah, so Todd, we actually at Futurum, we, we do a tracking uh, of the ESG and sustainability. We talk to somewhere around five or 600 of your peers every quarter. Uh, we did this in partnership with Honeywell and you know we were exploring kind of the trend lines. And one of the big trend lines that we found was is that there's some decent short-term optimism about being able to execute to sustainability plans, but it does seem that your peers feel a bit, a bit more overwhelmed over the longer period of being able to stay the course. Meaning, I think there was a lot of momentum that got built up over the last couple of years. But when you start to look at those 2030 and 2040 goals, um, those get harder and harder to sort of be sure you're on the right path. And then, you know, that path probably will consistently change. And, and, and I'm going to come back to that in a minute, though. But before I do that, one of the things you just said that was really interesting to me was net zero. You threw out the net zero term and that in the last even six to 12 months has really risen as maybe the number one kind of terminology that I hear about companies focused on climate and ESG is getting to net zero. So talk a little bit about Intel's approach to net zero and how do you see it as differentiated from kind of all the other net zero announcements that have been coming out? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, with, if I'm, if I'm getting too geeky technical on some of these sustainability areas, let me know. But when, when it comes to net zero, th there are three scopes uh, of, of emissions, as they call them, for carbon emissions. Scope one, scope two, and scope three. Scope one are your direct emissions coming out of your factories, out of your operations. Scope two are the indirect emissions associated with your electricity use. And then scope three for most companies, would, would an example would be their supply chain things that are outside their, their four walls, um, but, but have an impact on the product that they're offering. And so for us, we, we have set a scope one and two net zero goal by 2040. Um, as I mentioned, we're about, we've achieved about 80% reduction. We need to get to that last 20%. There's fundamental challenges that, that uh, are associated with that. And we think it's gonna take that long um, to get ourselves to net zero. For us, that means that we are going to reduce our emissions, our emissions and our emissions associated with electricity down to as close to zero as we can get. Uh, we currently are not in the business of offsets. 
uh, but we realize that may be something that's needed in the future. But for now, our focus is reducing those emissions. And then scope three, uh, we've set an interim target of a 30% reduction. Uh, th there, things are a little, uh, a little more challenging in understanding what exactly is your scope three emissions. Is everyone calculating that the same way? It gets very complex with a very complex supply chain. And so uh, we're a founding member of the semi uh, Semiconductor Climate Consortium. Just kicked it off, I think it was November. Um, great momentum, a number of different working groups where we're coming up with standard methodologies for reporting emissions. How do we do that? And ultimately creating roadmaps to move the industry towards zero or net zero carbon emissions. Yeah, it's really interesting what you said too about kind of the level playing field uh, when there's still some uncertainty in terms of how things are calculated. And then you mentioned the offsets and offsets are, you know, it's good that as, an, as large companies invest back, but that isn't really doing what we set out to do. It's kind of like a, it's like a toll, right? When you do that, and I understand that companies will do it because, hey, if we're not going to be able to achieve maybe a certain goal, we'd like to invest in helping others. And, and that's kind of how the offsets would, you know, potentially work. But of course, I think every company in the end, and it sounds like you're the same way, would rather do it through truly reducing, um, whether that's through supply chain, whether that's through manufacturing design, whether that's through, you know, how you build and, and run facilities uh, at Intel. Um, you know, you heard what I said a few minutes ago about some of the kind of what I would call longer tail concerns. You know, one of the things that probably bugged me the most in this sort of period that followed that kind of hype around ESG and uh, during the pandemic was that, you know, that a lot of companies only really looked out far into the future. And it's like, it's kind of kicking the can down the road in a lot of ways. And don't get me wrong, to make really meaningful change in something like this, you can't do it all in a short period of time. But for shareholders, investors, for uh, stakeholders in the community, I think they want to see more immediacy. They want to see action. They want to see you on a quarter over quarter, year over year, shorter term, something they can look at uh, more immediately see results. So, you know, while the long term goals are great, talk a little bit about the short term and the priorities and how you're showing these important stakeholders and shareholders that yeah. you're, you mean business about getting more sustainable. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. It, it, it's good to have that North Star, that vision, that direction of where you're headed. Uh, that, that strategic goal point, I, I think, is important. But you have to back that up with, uh, in my opinion, as you said, annual, quarterly, annual, regular targets and milestones that you're tracking yourselves to. Um, at, at Intel, we use what are called OKRs, um, so objectives and key results. And, and so we have set quarterly objectives and key results as well as, well as annual uh, for sustainability. And in fact, uh, our, our bonus, my bonus, but every employee's bonus at Intel is tied to our sustainability performance. And this year we have three goals. One is around increasing the amount of renewable electricity that we use. As I mentioned, we're over 90%, but we want to grow that further. Another is around um, water and uh, reclaiming, conserving more water, restoring more water. And again, we have numerical targets that, that we are aiming to hit. And then the third one is around waste, reducing the amount of waste that we're sending to landfills. And every quarter we have uh, metrics and targets that we report out on on a progress towards that. And ultimately, all of our compensation is tied to it. So we're taking it very seriously. And I completely agree with you. A, a long, long term goal without short term milestones and plans is not going to get us there. You need to have both. Yeah, I, I really like that. I've really been leaning in on the industry. We really, obviously, you know, at this event, we have a whole track dedicated to this for a reason. This industry, A, is a huge consumer of carbon because, you know, manufacturing requires it because utilization of technology requires a lot of electricity. But we also have the opportunity as a very uh, prominent, successful and critical industry to the future to reinvest to make sure that the long term that our children and their children have a world that we can continue to innovate and continue to meaningfully uh, make an impact safely and while taking care of the planet. So practical sustainability is kind of something I really lean into short term, Todd, is, hey, how do we get practical? How do we get how do we measure? How do we make sure that the people right now that are part of this can feel that their efforts are yielding results? 
But of course, you got to be a visionary too. And I like that you guys are setting those bigger goals, holding yourselves accountable and measuring to it. Todd, I want to thank you so much for joining me here at the 6-5 Summit as part of our ESG track and DEI on day three. I hope to have you back here at the Summit again soon or have you on one of our 6-5 shows to talk more about it. My, my pleasure. Been a great discussion. Much appreciated. Well, good luck. Keep, keep, keep rocking and keep making an impact and keep sharing the impact through data that everybody wants to see, you know, coming out from Intel. So, hey, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in here. We're at the ESG track, DEI, here at the 6.5 Summit, day three, 2023. Thanks for tuning in. Stay with us.